made my wish upon that star the only dream of which my list consists is to always be wherever For the snow to fall It would not make a difference To me at all No, I'm not wasting any dreams This Christmas I've made my wish And it came Good evening, everyone. I've been looking for you blooming everywhere. I have not been able to find my camera. And you know, when you're just battling against the time, it is mine and Ali's anniversary today. And we have something planned in London, which was supposed to be a surprise, but as with everything, I got it out of Ali early because I like to be able to dress accordingly. And thank goodness, I didn't end up wearing what I was planning on wearing because, um, we are going to we're going to have dinner at margot in london if you don't know about margot i've never been before but ali found it it's basically a sausage dog themed restaurant their logo is a sausage dog it's just all about sausage dogs so i'm really ex like really really excited to go there so we're going there for dinner and then ali is taking me to see the lion king as well which i've never seen before but i've heard very good things so i want to be comfortable but i still want to look nice the day is absolutely miserable continuing there's no frost there's no sparkle just yet so i'm leaning into the cozy vibes however i am committing my very very first um sin of going out in the rain and i'm wearing my hair down i've gone for a half up half down um, but i really wanted to wear something different and i don't obviously want to wear my hair up all the time even though there's literally not been a time for me to not wear it up because it's been raining non-stop i'm gonna see how i go with this it's probably gonna be an epic mistake but who cares so i don't have a lot of time so i'm going to head upstairs and polish my boots up um I also haven't mentioned that this is the last vlog of 2023. So we've got a lot to chat about. We've got a lot to discuss for the coming year, but um, I'm very much looking forward to it. First up, Le Boutin boots to be polished. I don't think these have ever been polished and actually I'm gonna put some shoe trees in them to make it easier and give them a bit of a clean as well. Because if there's one thing, that I have developed a very special love for. It is beautifully cared for boots and footwear. I think it's one thing that I'm taking into 2024 with me is taking pride in my shoes when it comes to my outfit. It's definitely something that I notice a lot more now. I've really enjoyed learning a little bit when it comes to this kind of stuff from Ali because Ali did an actual like class on uh, shoe shining so i'm just going to get all of the excess dirt and mud off so that i can give them a good polish people always ask me about my le Boutin soles i pay 50 pounds at a local cobbler uh, in stony stratford to have them done properly so that they're plastic and so that they don't scuff because i think they look lovely when they're nice and red Right, Ali, I'm ready.
outfit for our anniversary is caramel and dress, NPL scarf, Rouge H Birkin, Amelia Wickstead coat, freshly shined the Bhutan boots, which are looking very, very nice, and an Arvel bow. And my fragrance is Ambrette de Noir from Erin. We've made it down to London. We have indeed. <laughs> I was just admiring my wife's hair. Oh, you said you didn't like it earlier. No, I did not. I said I like it when it's down, it's down. I didn't say I dislike it when it's up, I just said I prefer it when it's down. Okay. There's always going to be an edge of preference in anything in life. <laughs> Do you like your left or your right foot more? I've never thought about it before, but I bet if you look down, you'll have a preference. There'll be something about one thumb that just stands out. <laughs> just got some standout features. <laughs> Well, what we were going to do um, was that we were going to head down to, to London and head to our favourite place, the uh, Burlington Arcade. We were going to go and pick out some rings for each other, but um, we didn't have enough time. We've actually just pushed live our final campaign for this side of the year. and. Um, it's going really well which we're really happy about it's actually a really good campaign that we did with ebay which was all centered around um their luxury reselling um and their authentication service that they offer which is completely um at no extra at, at no extra cost if i can get my words out just a dream campaign to work on really because you'll know that over the last sort of two years i've definitely explored and fallen in love with have i got mascara underneath my eye no. Oh, blowing out. I have. How has that happened? Goodness me. I've spotted. I can see that. Gosh, I've just been walking around with. Oh, you always do that. You never see anything that's wrong on my face. And I'll get home and I'm like, I've just walked around like that all day. Dream campaign where we get to work on. Um, like luxury goods and talking about the process of buying them through eBay which is a new thing that eBay has been promoting and it's been lovely to be a part of and it's doing really well. Anyway we're going for our first spot of um, anniversary shenanigans. We're heading to Margot in Covent Garden. Uh, yeah I think so. No I don't know. I actually don't know. I think it was Covent Garden. I think it was. I'm 90% sure it's Covent Garden. But if you didn't know that there was a sausage dog restaurant in Covent Garden, you do know now. Mr. Millen Gordon did his reset. Oh, you mean this is the shop that you've been looking for? It's tailoring for ladies. In fact, I'll take you outside quickly and show you the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You show them. Babe. Margot wasn't actually open yet. We were going to go in and have a drink. So we poodled off over the road and I found, what was it called? Walker Slater. What was it called? Walker Slater. Yes. I filmed it anyway. Yes. So we found Walker Slater, which I actually follow them on Instagram or TikTok or somewhere like that. And this is the shop that I have been basically moaning to Ali about that doesn't exist for a hundred years. And uh, it's basically purely women's wear. It reminds me just of like Anderson and Shepherd and places like that. I ended up picking up two silk neck scarves. I'll show you them when I get home. But we're now heading into the Sausage Dog restaurant. The gentleman has just delivered two very, very long breadsticks to the table and Ali asked if this was for the Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm for the little dad jokes. <laughs> oh, look at the wine room over there. That's lovely. It is nice. I feel like we could do one of those. I, I reckon we could definitely do with one of those. 
There's definitely space downstairs, 100%. But we did talk about this. We were going to, we said, <laughs> this was there like this. And I went, you just make space. <laughs> no, but what we said was it's better for us to display it actually in the bar. Yes. That's probably That's the better thing. Storage. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. We've got a nice temperature down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I am on wine duty and I think we're probably going to carry on having champagne by the glass or by the bottle? No, in the bottle, yeah. If it's a nice bottle. Sparkling and champagne. Also, I think there's carpaccio. Carpaccio. So we can either do some starters or we can get a share. So we can either go for the uh, cheese board. Yeah. Or we can get some. Oh, I'll have a look. Hold on. Let's get the let's get the um, champagne. champagne sorted. You want champagne? Or do you I want do. Sparkling or prosecco? We are in Italian. So prosecco. Here we go. That one. <laughs> <laughs> what is? Blanc de Blanc. I don't know what that is. To the salon. <gasps> They've got Paul Roger. That's a really good one. Yes, and that's yes. the Winston Churchill one. But hold on, what was the one that we had the other day? I think Paul Roger. It's this it's this Benny one, but it's it is our anniversary. And they, no, what was the one that we had with Lauren? The Rothschild one. Rothschild, yeah. But it's not there. But it wasn't a Roth yeah, Rothschild. I think Paul Roger. Perfect. We went for the Paul Roger Winston Churchill uh, vintage and it's from 2012 and obviously I kept the cork and it's got a picture of Winston Churchill on it. Perfect. Thank you. Oh my goodness, this is the spongiest focaccia I have ever seen. Look at the size of that. And also one of the things that I'm very much wanting to put in my handbag is this. Look at that little sausage dog head. Oh my goodness. Forever the cliche filming my food. I hope you haven't had a morning workout so I'm going to be going for a long time. Oh yes, I've been wearing. Perfect. <laughs> more, more, more. This is just about to be another six months. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect, thank sure. you. Yeah, yeah. I might have a little bit more later little though. Little. Thank you. Oh, it's bigger than your belly. Oh my god, I actually can't go how big this is. It's not the first time she said that. <laughs> it was that leaf blower when I got it, you couldn't believe it, could you? <laughs> oh, I've gone for the halibut and Lydia's gone for too much food. <laughs> How's the champagne? Good. How was that pasta? She said, oh my gosh. That was like the best pasta I have had outside of my nonnas ever. Ooh, big chow. Wow. You are going to love it. We're up. So the gentleman just delivered some brownie truffles and <laughs> the Roger Bourgeois hit the hit the head. And Alias, when he said some brownie truffles, Alias, if they were from the Datsun. <laughs> from the Datsun? Are we the Grand Circle, my love? Um, hoodie. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We had the loveliest, loveliest uh, anniversary. It was our sixth anniversary. And we went to Margot in Covent Garden and Ali booked it because obviously it had a sausage dog as its icon, um, icon? Logo. <laughs> and um, I have to say, I obviously, if I, I find it very, very difficult as an Italian 
to enjoy Italian food when it's not cooked by my nonna or someone in my family. I think that anyone that is Italian that is watching this will understand that it's just a different thing. Um, however, I would say that Margot is the best Italian I have ever had in a restaurant um, in England or that's not in Italy basically for like my entire life. Um, the pasta, beautifully al dente, um, the meat, it was just incredible, absolutely flawless. The food, the burrata, oh my gosh, so, so good. And we treated ourselves to a vintage bottle of champagne when we were there. But actually, like, if you take the vintage bottle of champagne away, it's really reasonable as well. And we were saying to Ali's dad and stepmom that basically, if you're looking for, like, say you're in London and you go shopping and then you're like, oh, let's have dinner. But you want to go somewhere where the food is good, the vibe is nice, um, but it's not going to feel like you're underdressed or anything go there, because there was people in suits, there was people in dresses, but there was people in more casual stuff as well. Um, we went to the Lion King as well. I think Ali and I have maybe realized that maybe we're just not theater people, and I'm sure that there will be people in the comments that will probably know things that we'll like a little bit more, but I want you to know that I really enjoyed myself, and Ali wants me to tell you that he didn't, um, because he doesn't want you guys to think that I'm like being ungrateful in any way. He was very much like, he really struggled to get into it, he didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, I had a lovely, lovely time, and I just want to say that, like first and foremost, I had a lovely time. But he wanted me to be honest because um, he knows how much you guys value like my opinion, and he wouldn't want anyone going to see it um, thinking that like we'd said that it was good or whatever like that. It's always really hard to say these things online because I never want, um, and I think it's just our personal preference. I don't think it's the show. I think just like from when I've been to see the ballet, honestly like tears I was in tears I think it was just a very different experience very different things and I really like I want to promise you that my intentions are good with telling you this because I it's just in case you look at the things that I enjoy and you're thinking oh if Lydia enjoyed that I'll go and see it and I would hate for that to be the case um in this instance anyway today is um Pretty much, it's been like our first day off. We had the guys from Nicholson's here this morning discussing our front walls. This was supposed to start in November um, and we've been told it's gonna start in January. This is the thing with trades, like I think I've realized. I just need to like, just be more chill with it. Um, but hopefully we've got some samples of stone to show you. I've also got the bedroom to show you, which I haven't shown you yet. And um, Ali's been doing some updates to the chicken coop, getting them some shelter and things like that. So lots to show you. I also have had some deliveries that I wanted to open up with you because um, I have, going back to what I said in my last video about dresses, my Teresa royally let me down. I was so, I don't know why I tell you about these things. I should never tell you about things before they happen. That is one of my, my, my life lessons. Okay, this delivery has come all the way from America. And when I tell you that I am finding some of the best designers on Instagram, I feel like I need to do an entire video because honestly, like so many brands get so much like airtime and there are incredible brands doing incredible things and they're like almost like under completely under the radar. And I just stumble across them and I'm like, oh. so this is from a brand called Alexia Maria. And when I saw their lookbook, genuinely, I was like, where have you been all my life? Oh my goodness, the packaging, what is this? This is too much, this is too much. Oh wow. Oh my goodness, is this a wreath? Oh my gosh, they have, oh my goodness, this goes perfectly in my dressing room because you know the fabrics on my um, blinds has this sort of baby duck egg blue, this, oh wow. Oh my goodness, and it's embroidered with my name. With my initials, sorry, LM. Oh wow, where am I gonna put this? I actually, I, I, I do almost think that, yeah, it's going there. It's going here. And then we've got little cookies, little faux cookies in here as well. This is what I love about fashion, I'm gonna promise you. We're gonna chat all things like intentions when we come back after Christmas. I'm so excited, so excited to just do more of this and highlight these in incredible independents. <laughs> Is this my Christmas day dress? 
hole. My word. Another one. Okay, this dress for me is like, and this is what I want to be doing when I'm doing like events and like red carpets. I want to be highlighting brands that like you guys haven't heard of. It's, you know, it's, and, and brands that I'm, oh my goodness me. Sorry for all of the gasping, okay? I apologize, but for me, this is art. Like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, but I'm getting the first dress on, I don't care. We're doing this now. But, oh, I need to steam it, but look at the back. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I feel amazing and this colour is just stunning. Oh my gosh, the fabric, this is pure silk. It fits like a glove, that bow detail. Imagine this for like Christmas Day or New Year's Eve. Oh my gosh, event dressing just got very, very exciting. Even this for like race days, if I was to get a red hat or something, this would be so wonderful for, oh. Please, whatever you do, check out her gowns because by there, there's like the most beautiful gowns. And like, honestly, I can't, I'm like overwhelmed right now. Uh, this is really something. My goodness me, this is such a spectacular piece. And the thing that I love the most, oh wait, hold on, it can be done up just a little bit more. So the thing I love is that these little bow details disguise the zip. Now, this is just the most exquisite gown ever. I feel like Audrey Hepburn. Imagine this with like a bright red lip. I was wearing a Le Boutin lip yesterday. In fact, let's do it now. Literally the messiest lip in the world. So let's do it. Look at that color. I don't even know what color this is. I've had it for years. This is the one. I cannot wait. Oh wow, and it's got pockets, guys. You have no idea how happy that makes me. I need to have it taken in just a little bit um, at the waist, just so it stays up, but that will be no issue at all. So happy. I'm just gonna be throwing black tie parties at my house for the next however many months so that I can wear these dresses. Okay, I had to show you my dress that arrived from Susanna London. Oh my gosh, you're a bit zoomed in. This is my New Year's Eve dress. I shouldn't be showing you this so early. My dress arrived from Susanna London for New Year's and I really shouldn't show you this before New Year's, but I just want you guys to be able to get one if you want one of these dresses. They're obviously expensive. This is part of her couture line, so it is one of those dresses that is more of an investment piece. I will always, always try and find affordable options, but the thing with dresses like this is that there's so much craft and so much detail. Like this is not just sequins, this is velvet and sequins, and then it's silk on the bows. And this has been fitted to my waist. This is like no dress I have ever seen. And the movement, oh my goodness me. I was just saying on my TikTok, like I genuinely think that if you look at all of the, the pictures of me when I was a little girl, I am always in like really pretty dresses. And I think that for a long time, I denied this part of who I am, okay? I was very much like that edgy fashion girl. I was trying to be in all of like the fashion, cool girl groups and branding and things like that. And th I genuinely think that this is one of those parts of myself that I really wasn't, like you'd see it come through in certain elements. And then now I'm just like, this is me. <laughs> I just really love feeling like a super girly, pretty girl. <laughs> and um, it's so nice when you realize that about yourself or anything about yourself and you're like, ah, this is why this feels comfortable because this is just like nostalgic and lovely and I feel lovely in it. It's just, I'm so happy. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> what are you doing? Doing the, um Okay, okay. Slippers going on. Oh, what did I just tread in? Oh, gross. 
put these little booties from Holland Cooper. Ali is um, working on the chicken coop and getting them more shelter. Please ignore the fact that I'm in my dressing gown. You are not coming. Away. Away. No, away. I fully appreciate that I was just in all of the most uh, glamorous gowns and now I'm in uh, my dressing gown, full face of makeup. So as I was saying, we're creating more shelter for the chickens because obviously it's been raining a lot and we just worry about them not having places to go. And Ali bought this big tube of corrugated steel to make a little like shelter for them. And it's arrived and it's very big. And obviously the handyman that he is, he is um, changing it. Also, can you see, I just don't know if this lipstick suits me. It kind of makes my teeth look a bit yellow. Anyway, I'm worried about my yellow teeth and I'm here in a dressing gown and a full face of makeup and a bow. Like what is going on? But yes, so he is working on the chicken coop whilst the chick chicks enjoy the garden. As you can see, Mr. Millen Gordon is decanting our corks into, there's one on the floor just behind, because we're doing the bougie thing of sorting through our wines and champagnes for the festive season, and I have popped together a little wine table down here. And on the table we have this um, beautiful home uh, in Notre Dame, which is from a book that I've got, I think it's Vogue Homes from Around the World. I don't know who's that, it's like, I just thought it looked nice. Um, but we've got some books on the table. Then this is my Nonna and Nonno's uh, World Atlas of Wine. And I have that on the table. We've got a selection of wines. A little Chateau Neuf de Pap. And then we have some of our favourites down here. We have oh, a Grand Vintage 2013 Moet. We have, I remember, I believe that this was in... Uh, Switzerland that I was recommended this particular champagne, Henriot. This is a Blanc de Blanc. Um, little bits and pieces in here. I think Ali's got uh, some from his travels as well. From Antonori. And he's also just put up one of my dad's pictures around here. This is, uh, was up in our living room. And we're just having a big sort out of everything. Well, this has escalated very quickly. I'm really glad that Ali's just ordered how many bottles of champagne on the food shop? I think we've got six Paul Roger. Six Paul Roger coming. However, we've got Paul Roger, mate. Paul Roger. We've got um, way more than that when it comes to Moet. We've got some Dom Perignon, some Runart, Bollinger. That's a 2005. We've got, and then we're into our English sparkling wines over here. We've got some Balney, Nye Timber, even Duck and Crutch. Then we're into, oh gosh. Then we're into our rosés, which I didn't quite realize how many rosés I had. This is one that I got for Christmas one year. This is from um, the place where A Good Year was filmed. Um, I've never tried it, but I just wanted to have a bottle. We've got some Whispering Angel. Uh, Babylon Storen. This one looks really lovely. If I designed a wine bottle, I think that's what the label would probably look like. And then we're into our reds, and then we've got a selection of ones that we're just sort of putting to one side because they're not really our taste. But very, very lovely. Lumi's helping. It's one o'clock in the morning. And Ali is... You wouldn't think about twice about being up at one o'clock if you were bloody drinking it, would you? <laughs> Ali is making me organise all of this. He is making me... <laughs> and we have selected what we're going to stock the fridge with upstairs. So we always like to start Christmas morning with a very nice bougie bottle of champagne. And so we're going with this Dom Perignon vintage... 2010 um, and then we're going to stock the wine fridge with 
a 2012 from Dom Perignon, a 2005 from Bollinger, and a 2013 from Moet. Then these are my last three bottles of Whispering Angel. Do you want to keep that or drink that? I would say I want to drink it. That is from Borgo Santo Pietro. Okay, so and chicken wine. Chicken, yes, my loves, we know, we're coming. So I'm gonna put, so we've got Moet, Laurent Perrier, and Bertito. So you're putting those in the wine fridge? These are gonna be cool, these are chilled. These are like, grab the bottle, they're okay. ready to go. And then we've got our sausage. Sauvage. So those are going into the, the fridge down here. And sausage. you've heard it here first. These are the last three bottles of uh, Whispering Angel I'm allowed to order. And I am going to make it my mission to have a little bit more of a test and a try. And well, you, know, you know you like this one. Yeah, I know I love chicken wine. That's very like very nice, but I've got some really really well rated wines here, and um, I think I need to start making a dent in them. The Christmas carols are playing throughout the house, and this is the update with a new car on the drive. Um, this is the bedroom now. Obviously, as mentioned, the headboard hasn't come out um, as we spec'd, so the actual bed itself is being replaced. Um, this headboard is probably supposed to come to about there on the wall, I think. So it's supposed to be like quite grand. It literally was just, I think, an oversight by the maker and um, not by the lady that I get all of my um, fabrics and upholstery done with. So she's just come over and she's measured everything up. We're going to be raising the bed up a little bit because at the moment, what it feels like is quite mid-century, like modern style furniture. And obviously, I really like a more modern take on traditional so we've done a few tweaks. We're gonna be bringing the headboard much further up. And also it's supposed to have a um, like flat edge. So we may do like a contrast fabric on the flat edge and then pipe it in the green. But I haven't decided on that yet. At the moment, I am deciding on what lamps to put in here. Sorry, we have our housekeepers here at the moment and um, it's always intense. But yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to decide on lamps at the moment, what to go for. These are the curtain tiebacks, which actually these are from our living room. Um, but if I pop you uh, a top something, <laughs> can you do that over there? I don't know if you'll be able to see me because it will be quite dull. Oh. So there, you might be able to see the green king in there. And then, I think the jute actually works really well and Pamela, the lady that does my uh, upholstery said that it picked out the branches of the wisteria really well and also adds that more natural element that obviously we have running through our home and I think that's now my mission is to just add a bit more natural textures like a lot more um, rustic wood and that kind of thing. The curtains are the real triumph. These are the curtains up here. So we've got this beautiful ash oak uh, curtain pole, very traditional. And then the beautiful Colfax, um, I believe it's Colfax actually, I'm not too sure. Uh, green gingham, which I love. I really wanted to give gingham a go in here as well. With the jute, you can see there it works really well with the curtain pole as well. And you might also be thinking, Lydia, why have you only got one tiny little bolster? Well, this was supposed to be a bigger bolster, um, but I'm actually having two made, but we may still have the bigger bolster done as well. To be honest, I will use green gingham everywhere. We also had these stunning linen cushions made with this beautiful fringe that I've got in my dressing room upstairs as well. I'm still working on the on the cushion arrangement I like, like I said, for things to come to me and I just think um, adding a little bit more sort of detail and um, pattern but also warmth, that's what my main focus is now in here but it is coming along so beautifully. Now I need to get handles on in here as well, um, lamps. Lamps are really throwing me at the moment because I don't want to go green on the lamps because there's a lot of green, but I don't want to go white because it feels like it will be too stark. Um, but I want them to be beautiful because you're going to see them down the hallway like that. So 
yeah we do need to have a think about these my goodness me it is so blustery up here look it's blown in some of the um oak tree leaves into my dressing room and it's even blown in some of the hydrangea bits <laughs> all the way up here goodness me look at how windy it is listen to all of the things hitting the windows it is so windy and ali and i have kind of been spending um the last few days organizing the house we fully intended to finish work last friday but we had some last minute campaigns come in and so we've ended up working until today i am going to have the biggest glass of mulled wine this evening you have no idea I can't wait to just switch off and enjoy the christmas period spend time with my friends what we've managed to do is clear a number of the bathrooms in the house because we have one two three four five six bathrooms one on the lower ground was full of stuff we've had a big clear out of that the last one is like a clothes i've got loads of clothes overflow in there i want to have like a huge wardrobe reorganize whilst I'm like on my holidays and just cleanse. You know what I'm like, it gives me such peace of mind. Um, but I've done it so many times, I guess you guys don't need to see it. But who knows, we're, we're gonna do a little bit of something, something I'm sure. Give everything a tidy, put everything away so that I'm ready for my holidays. So I'm gonna ha have a quick tidy up in here as well. Uh, like my diary. Also, if you're looking for a diary, my friend messaged me and she was like, I need a diary for the next year. I always use the um, Smithson of Bond Street Soho Diary. They do different colours every year. This is the navy one. I think I get this halfway through the year usually, but it's a great, great Christmas present and um, I use mine all the time. It's great for like, I use it for content planning and things like that. All of these bits and pieces. I'm just gonna speed clean. nothing better than an organized and freshly cleaned albeit with a few leaves scattered everywhere dressing room to sit down and talk to you in because um, I actually can't believe that this is the end of vlogmas and I completely appreciate that this has been a very very different vlogmas from last like the last however many years that I've been doing this and I'd love to hear what you thought um, <laughs> because I'm a bit conflicted with it, I've got to be honest, because it feels like, whereas my mind is always focused on Vlogmas, my, I didn't really focus on creating Christmassy content this year. That's just my personal reflection on this. Um, and it almost, like I don't know, it almost feels like there wasn't enough, but I know that there is always so much content at this time of year, and I have to say, it has gone in a flash for me, like genuinely, this has gone so quickly and I feel like I'm ending this year not feeling depleted, um, I'm ending this year feeling like I'm actually ahead, so I'm not going to spend the whole of the Christmas holidays getting myself ready to go back to work, I'm actually, I've, I've managed to get myself ready to have some time off, which is really nice, however, there is also the argument that like so I spoke to um someone else in the industry recently and they were like oh well I just kind of like work 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 all the way through December and then I chill in January because it is always quieter in January although my January is quite busy at the moment so that doesn't work for me but still it's <laughs> I think we have a visitor I'd love to hear your feedback on it and I just kind of wanted to sort of debrief on the year as well and just recalibrate and realign things I'd love to hear your feedback on the year and what it is that you would like to see more of next year because I definitely feel like I need a bit of a, a sort of change and she's gonna come in and just I, there's there's something that I don't know I need to figure out what it is that I want to do and what it is that needs to change um, 
And so I'm going to be doing a lot of thinking over the Christmas period and just thinking about what it is that I want moving forward. So your feedback is invaluable to me. And um, it's such a weird time for the internet as well, because obviously out of lockdown, TikTok became massive and there was just so many people becoming influencers at the moment. And it's it's very, very fast paced and it feels so strange to be making hour long videos when no platforms seem to be pushing that, especially not YouTube. I love creating long form videos and I want to do it better in 2024. So I would really, really welcome your feedback. I think for me, um, I want to focus on like being a bit more informative with what it is that I'm showing you and um, being a little bit more, um, what's the word, like focused. So when we have a vlog, I personally would like it to have a bit more of like a theme so that you're getting a bit more of a story from it, getting a bit more information. I have a lot to think about in that respect and I'll be coming back next year with a set of intentions and um, just a plan for the future. So this is your chance to now get that, like your, your feedback, what you want more of, like I 110% from the views, I see it. There will be more affordable, elegant uh, shopping and styling videos. That's gonna become a real series because as much as I know that I value craftsmanship and um, quality and things like that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's always expensive. What I am going to be doing moving forward is very much hitting as many different uh, price brackets as possible. Now that will be that high-end br price bracket So if you don't want to see that that this is definitely your time to sort of say I only want to see the more affordable stuff And there's so many girls that do those do like Zara hauls all the time It's not ever going to be the focus of my channel But I am going to be incorporating it as something more regular because I know that lots of you enjoy it So I've heard you it's coming second of all and this is my biggest sort of my Christmas wish I have been vlogging for eight years and growth on this platform now is really slow if you're not just churning out shorts. And I am about 2,000 followers away from 1 million and that is a huge feat for me because I'm someone that is still not like, I'm, I'm someone that's not managed by a huge management company. This is all very much like a family, friends and, and like, close-knit team running everything behind here and that's something that I really think is to be applauded that we've got to this point and we've got this far and that you guys still enjoy and watch and engage and so if you aren't following because it tells me that 30% of my audience okay I think it's 30% it might even be more watch my videos and are not subscribed oh my goodness the impact that you guys would have on my channel it will cost you nothing and it would change the game for me because it would mean that I've got to that milestone eight years come on <laughs> so if you are sat here thinking I know I watch it on my tv I'm not subscribed just just do it you don't even have to watch the video just even if you don't like me like even if you're one of those people that you cannot stand me but you continue to watch my videos just do it for me it's Christmas it's Christmas. So that's the one thing, the other thing that I ask of you. And then I just kind of wanted to share a few things that I've like learned over, um, over the last year with you as well. And I hope that that's okay. It's gonna be a little bit of a chatty end, but I couldn't leave 2023 without a bit of a debrief. I feel like I started this year off um, on the wrong foot and I really didn't want that to be the case, but what I've learned is that the thing that I really, really want you to watch and take from my videos is you can always keep going. No matter what career, no matter what it is that you're going through today, that you will look back on everything and you will always be grateful for the things that happened. Um, and you will always be grateful for the, the, the lessons and the, the changes that came from that. And I think that's the best that I can do with what it is that I'm putting out online. I've also felt since releasing Evergreen that this weird like comfort 
almost like washed over me. And it was almost like an acceptance because I've always said this, I, don't, I often don't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel like I fitted in at school. I didn't feel like I fitted in in the workplace. I certainly have never felt like I fitted in in the influencer space. But I almost feel like I've made peace with that, with the things that I've been speaking about over the last few months. When it comes to like fashion and trends and timelessness and quality and all of those things, it's definitely been such a huge learning curve that it feels uncomfortable when you start doing it. But the, the purpose and the enjoyment that you take out of it is definitely something that I want to sort of lean into. I would love to, to hear any kinds of videos and things like that that you would like to see moving forward into next year about those kinds of things because I think education around what to buy and what to ignore, I think one of the frustrations that I often take from the fashion industry at the moment is my personal opinion and my opinion is that a lot of people at the moment are using those words like timelessness etc etc um, around things that are very clearly trends and I think having a bit of a bit more of an education process around that so that you guys can have a bit more confidence um, in what you're buying and even me just being clearer on what I'm saying when I'm like buying gowns and dresses it's like that's part of my work I have to sort of have that and that doesn't necessarily fall into always the timelessness side of things however I'm quite careful with my gowns but there's a the nature of my job where I won't necessarily show you that side of things so I want to make sure that there's a clear distinguished line between Lydia and the things that she has to do for her job and Lydia the person who if she wasn't an influencer would make sure that this is what she was buying or this is what she was being careful of things like designer collaborations a lot more vintage I want to do a lot more like a lot more content around shopping for vintage, finding vintage confidence. Like I said, this campaign that I just did with eBay was so special and I loved, I absolutely loved it. Obviously it's important for me to say thank you to the people behind the scenes that make all of like everything happen, even just like uploading videos, super important. And just the, like the unsung heroes of everything that you see happening day to day. Um, Obviously, Carrie, my best friend, she literally does so much. Fee, Satin, the girls that like are the cogs that keep everything moving and make sure that everything gets done. Obviously, my husband, I mean, he's not really the team, he is the life, but just a huge thank you to him. Porty, Barkley, Lumi, the Chick Chicks, everyone that get like features, basically. It would be weird for me to not say thank you and end this year like this. Charlotte, her team, um, I feel really, really lucky to have found, like I really feel like I found a group of girls that like fits and it's just a nice working environment. And that is something that I think I've been searching for my entire career. I've said, I never felt like I was fitting in in this industry. And I think that's evident. I'm now able to make sure that things are a little bit smoother sailing here. Um, and just that we're, I don't know, battening down the hatches a little bit better. So really grateful to that. Also just obviously it goes without saying that I am eternally grateful to all of you and you're, you're just wonderful. You really are. The cards that you send me, the things that you pick up and you just happen to be thinking of me and you send them and the messages I know that you guys are, so, you, you make me laugh so much because you will send me a war and peace email, direct message, but you will not comment on my videos. <laughs> and also just a huge thank you to my clients. Like I feel like the luckiest girl in the world that I get to work with some of the most wonderful brands. And um, I get to do that because I have such a wonderful audience and so yes, just a huge thank you. I hope that you guys all enjoy your Christmas and um, New Year's. I'd love to hear what your New Year's resolutions, if you're happy to share them with me in the comments down below, like what it is that you're looking forward to in 2024, what it is that you're gonna be changing, um, anything that you're reading, just I wanna know everything. Um, and I think that that's kind of everything. But yes. Yeah. It's, it's felt strange not doing Vlogmas. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm hoping you're gonna make me feel better about it. <laughs> but it's been strange. I, no, I haven't had FOMO, I've just felt odd not doing it. Have the most wonderful Christmas. 
enjoy spending time with your family, enjoy spending time doing all of the things that um, you enjoy. If you're not having the Christmas that you thought you were going to have, like just know that I'm thinking of you. I know that this time can be very difficult, it can be very lonely. The holes that family members have left behind feel bigger at this time of year. Obviously those holes feel particularly big at this time of year and just know that I'm thinking of you and I will see you guys in 2024 and I'm very much looking forward to it. Gosh, it feels so weird. Why does this feel weird? It feels so weird. It feels like I'm saying goodbye, I don't know why. <laughs>